We wanted to give you an update on the progress of the interior of the Meadow Home. If you recall from earlier tours, this building used to be an old nursery office that was painted in very, well, let's say bold shades of fruit punch, mint, and pistachio greens. We decided that we would not only soften the colors of the home with a more muted color palette, but also utilize more natural ways of coloring and texturizing the walls, namely with a clay plaster in the main rooms and then a Tadillac lime and limestone plaster in the bathroom area. Aside for practicing with clay plaster in the future chicken coop, these materials were all very new to us, and as we moved forward with the project, we ended up utilizing even more techniques. But for this video, we'll focus on our use of clay, Tadillac, and lime. So today I'm become a plasterer, and Mateo's here, and we're gonna work on the house, plastering the walls, and we prepared everything yesterday. They primed everything and they mixed the clay. So today we could just focus on getting all the clay on the walls and on the ceiling. So that's what we're doing. Let's take a look. I mean, the chicken coop walls look really nice. Let's get it on the walls that we're actually living in, you know? We're deciding that we're going to do the ceiling. Yeah, it's, it's a great place to test it somewhere, and then, then we can use it uh, once we know it's cool. Like, we first didn't, real, we didn't know if we should do the ceiling as well, or if we should just paint the ceiling, but yeah. So you got to prime your hawk first there, Sondra. Am I starting on the wall or ceilings? No, you're going ceiling, buddy. All right. And you're just going to go, but you can come here. You're going to come here. I'm just going to. By 10 o'clock, I want you to work up the ass. Oh, no, no, no. What do you mean? It's going to no. fuck my wrist up. <laughs> okay, all right. What's that? By 10 o'clock, I want him using this one. Oh, yeah, he will. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's got to get used to it. This is the warm-up round. So far, I got one day of experience. Half a day of experience. Walter. 10 o'clock. That was the That's going to break my wrists. I'm gonna look at Mateo and see how he does things before I try this. So you're just gonna, I'll come fix it. <laughs> so don't don't worry about it. I just want the plaster on the wall. Ceiling? Or ceiling. Yeah. But you can just start- Get it on there. You know, it's nice to get on, but don't try to make it look nice. Just start, get, get just a make nice sure you even get a nice layer on there. A consistent thickness. Yeah. Consistent, even layer of clay on the wall, on the ceiling. With your schmutz, I'm gonna try to. This stuff is really nice. Like it's like cake batter. I know. Mm. I, keep... I wonder if oh you could God, see I'm it. I'm gonna eat another gallon of ice cream today. I wonder, I wonder if you could see it. It's like ice cream. <laughs> yeah. And then watch. Mmm. The tail's yeah. gonna get it. Oh. oh. Oh, I thought you were gonna just. It's kind of rough. <laughs> oh, I, I've eaten my share of plaster. The longer the stroke, the better. Cause then you don't get to see all your, and you're gonna have a hard time getting it on your trowel. Yeah, cause last time I just did this and it's stuck. Yeah, now so, it's, so the way, if you wanna. Show me how you do that. Well, you're gonna just put a little on. But you can put it on any way you want. So if you put it on this oh, way. Okay. Tip your hawk to you. Tip the hawk down. Oh, like this. You, you can get it on there and then. Okay. You just gotta get a feel. Don't think that you're not you're gonna drop all sorts of shit in the beginning, boss. You are gonna be a big. There we go. And you just go, you know, just go slow. Little or I'm gonna be covered in clay oh, after this. Covered. <laughs> I'm start half you know what? <laughs> what are you doing? In about three hours, you're all gonna go. Oh, I'm so glad we did the ceilings. Gosh. So it's like rock climbing all upside you're do, down. All you're gonna do now, you see you the island there? You're gonna go to the island next. This one? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just gonna get some there. Right. And keep your hawk and, yep, you're gonna catch your shit. There you go, buddy. Oh, that's a good one right here. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's about following your trowel with your eye now, Sander, so. You see how much oh, do you how much do you load your trowel, Sonder? 
And then how much follow it with your eye, because if you don't aren't following it with your eye and you're just trying not to drop stuff. Yeah, you're gonna be distracted. You just follow and you you steepen your angle once you start to use your plaster on your on the ceiling. Oh yeah. of plastering the meadow house. So the first day we got through the entire living room and bedroom slash bedroom. You can see Mateo's already in here. How's it going, man? How are you feeling today? Oh, amazing. Oh, I'm a little sore. What a, what a day to be alive. <laughs> I got this weird, like, like never that? used before muscle in my back that's like, hey, what, stop that. This is why yoga is so important. Yeah, you gotta really stretch. Because if you hit the wrong one, then you're out probably for a long time. For a long time. Cold showers too. Every Cold morning. showers. Okay. Every morning, straight in. Wim Hof, you know it. <laughs> Especially because he's Dutch. Dutch Wim Hof. Yeah, you could just you... jump in the water here. It'd be cold enough. Wow, this is looking great. So today we're going to tackle this room, which is the kitchen and the dining area. And Mateo is mixing up the clay that we mixed yesterday. So we prepared everything so that today we can just start plastering and we don't have to like do any of the mixing. So, but you know, to make sure it's like, has it settled and stuff, we gotta mix it up a bit in the morning to be able to have a properly mixed batch. So we tackled the pink room. This yeah, room. let's take a look at the windows here. Cause this is really where I personally love this clay stuff around the windows here. Look at this edge that's like, very subtly curving around. And what's so great about the clay, it has all this texture and depth, but then putting it next to a window really allows the light to play with it in all kinds of interesting ways. So I really love that. And then we have the white window giving it a very like, giving it a bit of a pop against the clay. Again, the clay is a bit dark right now because it's still wet, but it will dry up as we've seen in the chicken coop. And then it will just, uh, be a little darker, I think, than the window frame. But yeah. And then as you get more over here, there's less windows, so it gets more cave-like, which is appropriate because that's the bedroom area. So over here, it's a bit darker. And yeah, it's great. One more day of plastering, we'll tackle that room. And then after that, we have the bathroom to tackle. So, but that will be mostly Mateo. The day before, Matteo prepped the bathroom area with layers of thinset over the red guard that Sondra applied to the shower area earlier on. Now, red guard is a waterproofing membrane that is recommended for shower areas, especially if you're doing your own custom shower base, which we did. And that was a whole other process, which will be a subject for another time. The thin set is an adhesive mortar that is typically used before tiling, but in this case we're using to apply the Tadillac limestone product to the shower area and the shower wall. Being a shade of white, the thin set gave us a better sense as to what the bathroom area will look like now that it was no longer a dreary shade of pistachio green. That'll be, that our, that's our lime job. Yeah. Lime and Tadillac. So we'll switch from, from clay to lime, because Tadillac is lime, but it's just a, it's a process of lime plaster. All right. That's what's so cool about lime, is that everything in earthen plasters is, is literally process. It's all the same material. <laughs> yeah, it's right. just like, is it lime as your adhesive, or is it clay? 
And it's like Tadillac is just a layering process. Right. It's just layer after layer, compression after compression, and that's what makes it waterproof. Mm. It, it's the same material as the, the line plaster we're putting on here. It's just less of a process. Right. Different size aggregate. So your compression of the material is what makes it helps it make waterproof for in a shower. Yeah, and the layers, because yeah. there's literally we're gonna do six layers of lime. Yeah. This one will have two layers of lime. So that'll be more waterproof. You could do then. six layers of clay. You yeah. could do six layers of lime on everything. But people don't want to spend the money or spend the time. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of time. And that's also why we're only doing Tadillac on this wall. We're taking that wall that you're standing next to into it because otherwise you would see a big line here, I imagine. Mm -hmm. So just having that continuous. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's the reason why we're doing lime, just lime mm -hmm. plaster on this wall. It's a little less and intense. And it's less work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then you were mentioning, because we initially thought that we could also put the Tadillac on the shower base here mm -hmm. on the floor, but you recommended us don't do that because it's just gonna get, it's gonna see so much wear and tear that it's better to use a different material there. And we found out micro So cement. we found out that the fake Tadillac is actually called micro cement, <laughs> which is more durable, I think. So we're gonna see if we can mix the same color and throw that on the floor. And then for the window sills, like this, and also for our shower niche, which is a little indent in the wall over here, which you can't see. You might nice wanna... to know that two people can fit in the shower together. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's see, do we have space? It's comfortable. Yeah. I mean, you definitely need another I mean, shower head here because I mean, I'm taking this. Or if it rains, you can just open the window. Three of us right oh, shit. Oh, we're all, <laughs> it's a nice square footage down here. Yeah, it's a nice size shower for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for here, we're gonna put a tile just to be able to add more resilience there. Um, let me show you the tile. Well, it's actually buried underneath yeah. some plastic right now, but yeah. But you know, if we have like your shower goo on it or anything. Yeah, like yeah you mean, you know how, it. you know how nasty shower places can get with a bunch of bottles and, you know, at some point, you know, it, it just gets gross. Um, so yeah, putting a little tile here will help that and it will just add some resilience because if it was, if it was Tadillac or micro cement over time, it will see a lot of wear. So yeah. And then we still have to figure out the shower rod here, which is gonna have a curve in it. So that'll be another thing to figure out. Yeah, but hopefully today we can get the kitchen area done and then that's where we're at with this update. By the end of day two, all the clay on the walls and ceilings were complete, and the bathroom area was prepped for a future application of Tadillac and Lime, which would take place a couple months later when Matteo freed up his schedule again. This is the first coat, the first base coat for the Tadillac. So you actually need two base coats for this Tadillac product. So you gotta put that first one on, and then once that one dries, you gotta put a second one on. And so I'm going to put the first one on. How long does it take to dry? 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So clean buckets, clean stuff. So traditional Moroccan Tadillac plaster is applied on the wall and then burnished and compressed with stones, different density of stones and smooth stones. And you're just pressing the plaster. And I think I would like using stones 
but it's a little intimidating um, and it requires a lot of skill stone work. Not that the trowel work doesn't require a lot of skill, but I, I like it that, that I get to use trowels to apply this product. So obviously with the base coat, it's just like a normal lime plaster and we're gonna apply it just as, as is, a 1 8 inch thick base coat. And then just start layering, layering the lime, layering the lime. That's what I'll do. I'll do this wall to that corner. It's gonna be a weird corner to leave. I'm gonna hit that a little bit more. So you wanna, when you put this thin set coat on, you know, this is an eighth inch sort of ridges that you put here, and this is a good teeth for the lime to grab hold of. But you, know, you really wanna have your corners sanded nice, so that when you come around, you don't get any bumps. It's not that the lime plaster doesn't create a little lift, but it's just nice to be pretty bump free, no clumps. So it's gonna be rough. We don't want it to be smooth. It's just you don't want like clumps. I already did this once, but I'm just gonna double check my work here. And I think if I do that first, I'm gonna wrap around. I'm gonna do the big wall last. gallon and a half. Drills ready. Product going in base. Oh, look at you. And right now, we're saying welcome back. You've been resting and sleeping. Now it's time for you to come back to life on these walls, on these shower walls. Nope. Okay, add more. This way, when you add in layers like this, you can be really sure that all of the lime gets, oop, gets a little, gets reconstituted. If you added it all at once, it's really hard to mix it. So now I think we're in a good spot to just go for it. So once you don't see any dry stuff, I'll scrape it. Then you gotta make sure you just really actually mix it. You see, that's pretty thick, so I'm gonna add some more water to it. How quickly did, does this, um, look this dry on you? Oh, it's, it's not a fast process, okay. as long as it stays wet. Okay. I mean, it's, it's way faster than, than clay. Yeah. So it can be. But you want lime to sort of set up in a nice, slow. You don't want it to dry out too fast on you. Oh, look at that. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's a nice one. So I'll give it a little scrape. So now I'll mix it for three minutes. All right. <laughs> Exciting. I get so excited. 
plastering. A lot of, a lot of people, uh, they don't really understand how much joy this brings me. What do you mean? You're working. This does not feel like work to me. This is what I love. So. Oh, oh goodness gracious, I love it. I'd, I'd love for you to come in here, get all. Are we uh, still talking about <laughs> No, no, you're fine. You're doing fine. I'm gonna keep working on the windows while they're doing it. On the big wall, I might. It'll be fun if you do it with me. No. Oh, oh boy. Here we go. Oh, wow. After some back and forth on what color we should paint the wainscoting, we eventually decided on a sagey green color, which immediately gave the main rooms a more calming effect. A couple weeks after the wainscoting was finished, Matteo returned to do the non-wet use lime wash in the bathroom, and then a few days later, worked on the Tadillac process in the shower, which was far more involved. Isn't this crazy, this color? It's so dark. And what the lime does I to know. the color. Yesterday we put on the base coat for the, um, the stone plaster, so the, the non-wet use area. Um, so that was really cool because we use this color mix that we've got uh, called pearl. And when I think of pearl, I think of white. But when you add this color to this, to this water, I mean, you can just see how dark it is. Yeah, it's scary dark. It's scary dark. You're like, wow, you're really choosing a dark color. But this is what the, the power of the lime white does to color, you know, because it's so bright white lime if you just used it, you know, raw. So it's just cool to just see the alchemy. You know, this is what I love about like mixing your own stuff. You're just like, you just see how, how this, this water adds so little color to that huge pile of lime. Um, so today what we're doing is we're mixing up right now, I'm mixing up the, the finish coat for the stone plaster. So the lime plaster on the ceiling and the walls that aren't the shower area. And that's what we're gonna work on today. So after I stir it up, I, I pour it through this strainer. It's like a cheesecloth, right? Oh, there's little stone pebbles and stuff in it? Or well, no, no, it's, it's for if, if, if some of the color, some of that pigment, you know, it's a dry pigment that I'm sort of rehydrating. So what happens sometimes is you get these little clumps. And if you get, get the clumps, maybe we'll see some in here. But if you get these little clumps, they can, they can make like little splots of, when you're plastering, they can sort of explode in the plaster. Not that that's not even a, they're, they're sort of a cool effect, but you know, this is just a good way to make sure that your plaster is sort of consistent all the way through. A Little at a time to our water, and we're rehydrating the lime now. So really what I try to do when I mix it is I, 
I like to try to get rid of any lumps before I add more. I like to really see it smooth. You see how there's those little clumps? So I just turn it. I turn it until I don't see any clumps before I keep adding stuff from my bag. I'm gonna grab my little bread knife here. Get the little clumps, because you know what I find is if I don't hit those clumps now, if I don't hit those clumps now, they'll sort of get stuck on the side of the bucket. And then you know, that can pop in your plaster if you don't mix it all. You see these little clumps? Those are little lime clumps. They still need water. It's literally an ancient building material. It's like the Roman Empire was built with lime. You know, the oldest application of lime was like in 7,000 BC. So like lime has been used because it's a, limestone is everywhere. Not everywhere, but a lot of places. So it's like, what a great building material that you can, I mean, you can process. It's quite a process to make your own lime to get it so that it can be rehydrated like this, but it's basically calcium carbonate. So in material like this, it's like, depending if they're at a limestone quarry or if you're getting it from coal or, or shells, you know, it's, it's, it's just cool how calcium carbonate, when gone through a kiln, can turn into this really amazing building product. So you basically fire the limestone at, depending on what kind of lime you're making, you know, and what kind of lime you harvest. You see how creamy that is? Beautiful. You know, you fire it at about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit and you can, Create your own building material that's super strong and can withstand the test of time. Thank you, time. All right, so when that happens, I know I need more water. Precious. And you have to go collect water and bring it to site instead of it just coming out of a hose. Close now. Once the, the plaster comes on, once it starts going off of my trowel onto this wall, you can't stop all day. You're so, gonna full on, no, no lunch break for you. Nope, just I putting food in my mouth as I go. I hope you had a good breakfast. I did, morning. I did, I did. So tell me why this process is like full on. Like what's the process? Well, the process is when you start, the, the, the first coat is sort of the, determine sort of the flow of the day because when you put that first coat on depending on how how fast the wall sort of absorbs the moisture out of that first coat determines how fast you need to get that second coat on because you you need to go wet on wet each coat needs to go on top of each other so there's four actual plaster coats that are going to go on these walls in that first coat to second coat that transition is where it's going to be like that that pressure time because we have to go around these windows. You know, if it was a flat wall, it would be really easy. But all these little curves in the ceiling and in this little nook in here, this niche, you know, there's, there's a lot of time that needs to be spent in these areas. But that means that this wall is then drying depending on the day and the moisture in the room. It's like, how fast is this gonna cure? Because I need to get wet on wet for that next coat. The third and fourth coats, it's, it goes a lot slower because you already have subsequent co coats on top of each other. So it's like, I'm okay. There's less pressure on that, but it's that first to second coat. So 
you're gonna do those, we're gonna do those first four coats and then it's like burnishing. And the burnish is pretty much what starts to create the Tadillac effect, that water resistant, water repellent effect. It's like, after we get the four coats on, it's like, I've got, we're gonna have to really press into these walls. And you're so, not pressing with anything other than a, a plaster, or like a- A trowel, trowel. a steel yeah. trowel, a steel trowel. So it's like, the angle is very important. Just not pressing too hard and not pressing too early because if it's too wet, you don't wanna burnish it yet. But you can't burnish it if it's too dry. So it's all like a little art. It's a little art project. Yeah, art and timing, I guess. Art and timing, yeah. And, and I, you know, when does the olive oil soak come in? Does that come in after it's completely dry? And no, no, that has to come on while it's still wet. Okay, so then you get four layers of Tadillac and then... Four layers of Tadillac, two different styles of burnishing, and then two layers of soap before the end of the day. So that two layers of soap also requires burnishing. So you roll that soap on and you have to burnish the soap in. So that all these walls will be burnished with the olive oil soap, which creates that chemical reaction that gives it that water repellency. Now you pre-prepared in your own home for this moment, yes. right? How was that experience for you? Oh, it's so fun. I mean, I love it. Uh, we learn, I mean, you always learn so much every time you do a plaster job. But with Tadillac, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot at stake because it's about water. So it's like, how do you protect these walls from, from direct water contact? So there's no like cut in corners. You know, we can do that with a, with a living room wall because it's not hitting water or like even this wall, you know, like we're, we're, all, we're all good. But when you're in this shower, you're soaking it in and the water's splashing here and the water's sitting up here, you know, you need to have a waterproof coat. So that's what we're creating today. And it's gonna, it's not only creating a waterproof coat, cause yeah, you could do a latex thing, but this is, you're gonna want to shower in here. People are gonna want to spend time in here because of the, the feeling that lime plaster creates. And all of those layers will create that effect. That's, that's what the art is. That's why people love it. There's no grout. There's no like, it's so easy to clean. That's another thing, you know, like all these little grout joints, I mean, and mold, all of that. But lime, what's so beautiful about lime, well, there's lots of things. Not only does it create that effect and that feeling, but it also creates a, a wall system that has this incredibly high pH level. So it's super basic, like pH of 10 to 12. So no mold grows on this stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, there are specific care tips, though. You can't use any acidic cleaners on it. Right. Mm -hmm. and, you know, for us, we're actually doing travertine tile, which is like a, a limestone-style tile. So, it, essentially, the whole place is going to have to care for it the same way. Right, right. That's good. <laughs> it is good. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to... Yeah, the maintenance is a whole different thing. It's like, well, if you start putting... Yeah, weird cleaner products on this. It's not good for the plaster. No. No. But otherwise, easy to clean and keep clean. Oh yeah. You're right. I don't really love those moldy grout lines. Yeah, the moldy grout lines that everyone is always fighting. Yeah. Or they're like, oh no, I don't think that's mold. It's just a different color. Or, you know, like, eventually you got to take care of those things. But this is what's so cool about lime and earthen materials in general. They're very yeah, they they work within the environment. They're alive, so they're like taking in data and then responding to that data because they're these materials that are really, really alive and present with what's happening. It's sort of esoteric, but I, that's why I like doing this stuff. So now I'm just sanding all of this because I want to. I don't want any loose sand particles or little chunks and on corners when you put the base coat on you get you get little chunks that sort of dry on and so before we put our before the Cadillac goes on I just scrape off any loose sand on top of this because if I start putting plaster on it those little sand dry pieces of sand get stuck in the plaster.
it dry for some time and Matteo later returned the following month to finish the process with some layers of wax. All in all, the whole clay and lime plaster was a very involved but rewarding process. The way we feel and relate to the space has completely changed, even despite the fact that it's still a work in progress as far as the renovation goes. We absolutely love the way it turned out, and we'll likely be implementing a clay plaster and lime wash in the common house down the line. All right, so this is the finished bathroom. Well, sort of finished. Finished, except for we have no water yet. So everything is kind of like an Ikea uh, showroom right here. You're like, oh, the sink comes out and it's not working. So once the water's hooked up, it will be finished. But we got floor heat in, we got the lights are all working, the bathroom fan is working. So, and we have the, I mean, there's so much, let's focus on the walls first, because the walls are, turned out really nice. Really so, nice. This is probably my most favorite texture of the whole house. It's this Tadillac, and it has this uh, wax layer on it, like beeswax layer. And it's really nice and smooth. It's, just, it's, it's nice, like, it feels like a stone. It feels it like is just stone. a giant stone slab. And it's not, like, we have this as well, which is the lime wash or lime paint or what without, do you call it? Yeah, it's lime without the wet, wet use Tadillac process. What's wet use? Well, the wet use is what you use Tadillac for because and that's a oh, process of lime. Oh, I see. So you can use it when, in an area that gets wet. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this kind of, it has the same texture, but it still kind of feels like there's a drywall behind it. This is just, it feels like a solid stone. And it might have something to do with the thickness of the material because I think this is a lot thicker than just a thin layer of paint. Well, it had so many layers and then you have to burnish those layers, yeah. right? Yeah, you really compress it. So yeah, I love how it turned out, um, especially with the window here. You have all this natural light coming in and you know, giving some interest to some of the details here and all the trowel marks and stuff. So, and then here's the tile that we yeah, did. Yeah, so what this, this stuff is good for walls, but whenever it's like a flat surface or even the floor, it's suggested to do something else because Tadillac will probably not hold up as well as say tile. So we did tile for like the shelves and also in here. Just so, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't start to get grimy. And then you bought this actually, which mm -hmm. I think is really smart. So that you, if you have a shampoo bottle or something, it's not just sitting on the tile. You're actually like have it off the tile a little bit mm -hmm. so that there's kind of airflow moving. Yeah, and then the floor, it's a, a micro cement. So it's basically a micro cement topping. So it's a really thin cement that you kind of trowel on and then you protect it and make it waterproof with an epoxy layer on top. I think it's kind of traditional that like some folks would carry on the same color, but we actually had dyed the micro cement a little bit darker and we actually liked the effect that it created of like the bicolor as if it was like dip dyed in the color. Yeah, we use the same exact color as we used on the wall, but obviously a much thicker concentration. Mm -hmm. And I also noticed that, you know, applying the final protection coat on it made it a lot darker. So first it was a little closer to the walls, but then we started to apply, like I have actually another piece of drywall that I applied the same stuff to. I'll, I'll insert a shot of that here so you could see the difference, what it looks like when it's unfinished and when it's finished. but. Yeah, I like the look of it. The only thing I'm not super jazzed with yet is this uh, silicone caulking here on the edge, but we might peel that out at some point and put something else. Uh, but that's really functional for now. And I just we don't, make we don't sure. have any of the hardware in here either, you know, for the shower or anything like yet. So we're still kind of working on that. Yeah. And we might just make sure it's all functional and waterproof. So there's not any water that's gonna sit in, an, in a corner somewhere and start to get in between the uh, surfaces. So yeah, and then you install the toilet, install the baseboard. Yeah, and then talk about the, the tiles. Yeah, the tiles. So the first thing we did is we uh, put this um, like underlayment on that had these grooves in it for a heating wire. Um, so we put the floor heat in and 
then we tiled over that and the, and the underlayment also prevents tiles from cracking. It allows it to move a little bit. So and we did a mosaic here. finish and we just had enough tiles. Yeah, the tiles were like the last, it was like clear out from the store. Like, so they didn't have any more and they were like all cracked, like the corners would be cracked. So what we ended up doing is like, well, we wanted to do this anyways with the like smaller tiles. So we end up just cutting all the bad sections off and then we just puzzled them together in a pattern that we really liked. And that way, uh, yeah, that way it all worked out. We just had enough. Yeah, you, you really like this old barn wood and I think it works really well with the textures here on the wall. This was a barn that's over a hundred years old that's from the local area. Yeah, so a furniture maker here in the area, he turned it into cabinets and yeah, we fitted it all in here. Have this large area so you can do laundry and stuff here, um, the vanity, and yeah, I think it, it's really great. Yeah, we also have these shelves in here, by the way. So okay. some of that barn wood we actually used as uh, windowsills. So with this nice live edge. So then here is a closet for just utilities. So we have the water heater in here and also some of the internet equipment. So this bathroom layout was really claustrophobic to begin with. So the door used to be here and then you would come in here and then there would be this weird closet space in front of you that you have to kind of dodge in order to get to over here. Um, so it would take up a lot of space. And what we end up doing is like, we end up taking the water pressure tank out of this building to another building that is connected to this building so that the pressure can be uh, put on the water from there. And then the only thing that needed to go in here was the water heater. So I built this tiny closet for it that fits it precisely. And then that way we have this huge bathroom area here. And we also ended up changing the windows. So this window used to be over there. And that window used to be where these drying racks were. And what was always weird to me is that, you know, that side is the road. So you're looking out at the road, plus this huge window right here in the middle. It's annoying because like when you come out of the shower, you have no place to hang a towel or whatever. Um, you don't really need a window here either because if you're standing here in the vanity, you're going to have all this like light behind you and you're not going to be able to see what you're doing. But now when we're looking like in the vanity mirror, you have this nice light coming from the right because there's a window and you have backlight coming from that window, which is not that much, but you know, this one's definitely more light than that. And then you have the light coming in from the front. So we're also thinking about like, you know, film, composition, lighting, and applying that to like how the bathroom is organized. And yeah, this, this is a great layout. Then uh, we have this curved shower rod as well, which was quite a challenge to make. Yeah, but we'll, um, we'll feature some of yeah, that we'll later. Yeah, we'll feature this and yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the bathroom. Stay tuned here for more progress updates on the Meadow Home. And if you're enjoying our videos, Consider subscribing, liking, hitting the notifications button, and even tipping. We're reinvesting 10% of our Google AdSense revenue back into the Finger Lakes community, and that's being matched by our partners over at Espoma Organic. So your support really helps. See you in the next video.